and you are looking live here in Waco, Texas. It is week one, game three, or should I say game four, as right now we have the Baylor Bears taking on the USC Trojans here in Waco to kick off week one. Well, not kick it off. I mean, it was like two games earlier. I need to get into this one. I haven't streamed in a minute. But yeah, I'm ready to see this one. Both teams coming to this game trying to get their first win and get a better ranking to kick off their season. Baylor coming to, into the season with the only team having an uh, actual good preseason game, which would be the only one that, you know, went well for them. But, oh, they lost. They lost to Louisville, who... Louisville wanted to lose themselves in the first game of the season, in which it was a thriller up in Kentucky, Louisville, as Ole Miss and Louisville went and had it for the first game to kick off the season. I mean, how about how about the game to, you know, kick things off? And then right now, well, the game after that, which was the game, you know, the day after that game, uh, Texas faced TCU, in which TCU lost huge at home, 24 to zero, in which it was a complete blowout. TCU just not able to do anything there in that game. So yeah, I am BJ coming to you from VRSN, and right now I'm excited for this one. As I mean, USC, in my opinion, comes to this game as a favorite, low key. Why? Because they have, I mean, they're basically your former national championship. It's just champions. They actually rebranded to USC, in which this team were your Florida Gators. But here they are now, ready to geo being the, well, not being the AD. Uh, Hollywood being the AD, trying to get another national championship win for this team. Can they go back to back? Who knows, as Baylor Bears come to into this season as a new, fresh team in this league. So, they're going to try to prove everyone wrong, as most people thinking that USC is going to win, as, like, again, I say they're the favorite in this game. Now, let's take a look back into the couple of games we had. Like I said, the first game to kick it off, an absolute thriller, a, a three-point game. At the with six seconds left, I mean, talk about a final drive by Athena. Uh, Louisville scored with 37 seconds left on the clock, in which Athena and the Ole Miss Rebels went down the field to tie, or not to tie, but to go up by go up by three. Yeah, and then they also kicked the field goal to you know give him that three point margin. But it's crazy because the game ain't over yet, because just like that. In a, blink of a, in a blink of an eye, you have Louisville downfield all the way inside the 30. Possible field goal being able to go be made. So they decide to kick one. And it looks like it was blocked, but it was replayed. And it was blocked again, which gave the Rebels the win. So just dodging the overtime is Ole Miss. So they moved to 1-0 as Louisville, after winning their preseason game against Baylor, who's playing right who's going to play soon, they... Dropped to 0 and 1. And again, let's talk about the Texas and TCU game, which was the game right after. That game not being a problem for Texas. I mean, Texas looks sharp. I mean, there could have been better throws made by the QB, Cody, in that game. But I mean, Cody's just, after that Fiesta Bowl loss, he just, I mean, what a way to answer it. I mean, seriously. After that, I would not be so positive but Cody is being positive as he has something to prove here he he thinks he and the Texas Longhorn thinks they could get a shot at getting themselves in the national championship finally this year so so yeah so after that game we're having the Tennessee and uh, Army game right now that game will be recorded I'm not sure if it's being streamed but who knows uh before I left that game, Army scored on the first drive, so they struck. So they striked quickly. 
So now we bring you to the field as USC chooses to defer. So Baylor will receive the ball to kick this off. And USC will receive the ball in the second half. So this is game four right now. So I'm excited. Again, I'm excited for this one. I'm going to turn that off and let me, hold on, let me put the audio on for y'all so I can hear the, you know, the fake crowd noises because, you know, it's really like that. I mean, it really is like that. But, yeah, I'm really ready for this one. So let's do this, folks. I cannot see the scoreboard. Uh, hold on, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let, me do, let me do this for uh, real quick. All right. Uh, okay, it did not work. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm team media. So the ball is blown, and we're waiting for it to be kicked off here, in which it is. And we are underway here at Waco as the ball will be taken out of the end zone for a touchback. I am so excited. Baylor coming into this game, losing a preseason game, but that doesn't matter. They have something to prove this season. They think that if they could win this game, pull off an upset, they could, you know, have a better, you know, I mean, just, you know, I can't think of a word right now. I apologize. So the whistle's going to be blown here. Baylor not looking like they have a center. I mean, they have many receivers on the field. Looks like they're trying to get things organized. As many of their players, as it looks like, they just ran on the field. Baylor's offense not looking too shabby in that first game, recent game. I mean, to be honest, they look sharp. Louisville defense could not stop them. It's just Baylor's defense just could not execute on the final drive. And I do apologize if the stream is laggy, apparently. I mean, <laughs> it's not even that my PC's bad. For me, I'm running this smoothly. It's just my Wi-Fi. That's just how it is when your Wi-Fi is not doing good. So, saying I dropped some. It's telling me that I dropped some FPS, sadly. So, I apologize for that again, y'all. So, we still wait for this game. Uh, not good opening statement by myself, but I'm not going to lie. I apologize for that. So... It's like Baylor called a timeout just to get themselves organized as, again, they have issues with players just running on the field. Without any consent. Now watch. I'm going to predict this is probably going to most likely be x loan <laughs> in this game. <laughs> I can tell you. There's most likely, I, I already know there's going to be, be some x loan, bro. Cause people, would just, people are just weird, bro. People are just really weird. You can tell. So, Baylor's still not having a center or O-line. So, I am so sorry for the delay. Uh, yeah, we're going to go to break, bro. We're going to go to break. Y'all can stop watching this atrocity right now. Okay, never mind. Maybe they're about to get sick. Okay, finally, I have a center. But that, that might be a jersey warning, guys. Looks like they just brought in some random dude. Looks like he just a black dude who looks like he just came from Japan. I mean, holy, like <laughs> these dudes are ed. Excuse me for a sec, y'all. It's... 
So the whistle is going to be blown here as Baylor not even have a chance to get positive yards as they were flagged back five yards. I, I don't even know what it was for because I was talking to officials. Well, four minutes and 57 seconds left in the quarter. It's going to be a first and 15, which is called a dead play as there is a flag on the field. What is? I just want to know what is the call. As looks like they're going to be moved back even more. So that is not how Baylor would like to start their drive. In which they're going to start all the way back at their 10 yard line for a second and 20. Just not organized here. Again, they have so many players just running on the field randomly. It's kind of odd. So center's going to try and get set here. <laughs> Baylor just not even giving me a chance to commentate at all. I mean, give me a break. Center is still looking not to get set. <sighs> oh, man. All right, the ball's finally snapped. There's another flag on the field, and it's dead. So that's going to move them back even more all the way down inside their five. Which is a false start on Baylor. Not organized. I mean, you just got to watch the ball there. It looks like one of the receivers jumped. Oh, well, it apparently is on the center. Saying he was past the line of scrimmage. So that's the main reason on why it was called a false start. Baylor starting their drive with a third and ten, a total of four flags. Not even getting one snap off in which they finally get it off. No flags right off the snap. Quarterback dropping back in the zone. That zone is going to be PBU drop down in which it's going to be a 4 for 25 all the way inside the Baylor 5. That's going to give them. They might have to punt it. In which if I were Baylor, I would. Now, you know there are Eds in this league, so maybe they might not decide to punt that. Who knows? As the quarterback is all the way back into shotgun formation, it looks like they're going to punt here. In which they are. So smart move by Baylor. But just not a good idea when it comes to. Well, not. I mean, it is a good idea. But Baylor just not having a good start to their drive. I mean, a total of four flags. I mean, that right there, the PBU was their first play of the drive. I mean, just that, all those flags just giving them issues. Which their center cannot seem to get set. So the PB drops back, and which he's going to punt it all the way to the 48, in which is going to be scooped up by TQ Hollywood. As he's going to truck a man, making moves. He has some blockers as he gets towards the 45 yard line, gets inside the 45, all the way to Bailey territory. So USC is going to start their drive yeah, with good field position all the way. To about the 44 year. All right, like just between the hashes. So it's going to be a first and 10 here. Gio being the quarterback, trying to win his team another national championship. TQ being the AD, also trying to do so. Can they do it? Let's, let's see if they'll be sharp as Gio is going to drop back, rolling right, as he has great pass protection so far, as they actually have more than one O-line, unlike Baylor. Gio stepping up in the pocket, throwing it towards the right side, has his receiver. Hollywood wide open, is going to make a move. He tries to hurdle a man, getting all the way down inside the 15. So USC is going to start off their drive with an excellent play, getting them all the way into the red zone. No problems there, as it looks like the short could not pick up on those two receivers coming back. So that will give them a first and 10. At the 12, well, about the 12, just between the hashes yard line. So I'm going to wait for the snap here. If you're just joining the stream, uh, 
I mean, shoot, subscribe to VRSN for more broadcasts. I broadcast leagues like LFG, well, D2 for now, uh, NSFL, which they have a Super Bowl soon, so I'll try and look to see if I'll commentate that. So look forward to that as they're going to truck it up the middle, which will be a handoff, which is going to be a second and eight. As they move inside the 10 at the nine-yard line, so nice little gain there, picking up a two on the carry. USC not looking too bad. As that was probably their second play to drive. Rolling right is Geo as he scans the field. Still looking as he's was taken down. I mean, will that be called a sack by the officials? And they call a hitbox. So Geo with all that O line in the backfield, he's gonna be sacked all the way down to the about the 16. 17 yard line well, that, yeah that's about the 16 so that's going to give a USC a third and 15 O-line not be able to not being able to pick up a block guys looks like Baylor has D linemen which brought the pressure they're trying to jump them off sides in which it does not work as they drop back GL scans the field as he rolls right there's a flag on the field might be a free play as it was called late he throws it deep towards the right side corner. Picked off, diving out of the end zone, though, which is going to be out of bounds. And which is a free play. So that'll move Baylor up. Excuse me, not Baylor. USC up by five, which will give him a third and ten. So they jump him off sides. He's somehow. It was, it was a double jump, apparently. So why is it being moved back okay so it is going to be moved forward uh, it should be a So the ball is going to be snapped. Dropping back is Gios. He throws it towards the middle. It's going to be picked off. Throws it straight to the defender. Looks like the receiver is going to pick up on that. And Baylor will get the ball out of the way inside the five, though. So not good field position to start this drive. In which they got a takeaway. Exotic. With the pick. As he just read that all the way. I mean... In my opinion, that's not a good throw. You can't risk that. So it's going to be a first and 15, excuse me, a first and 10, in which Baylor's going to somehow be set up at the five yard line. What are these refs doing? As the center will try and get on sides, I mean, that might be a false start. In which, no, they're not going to call it. I mean, they're not calling it. Ball's going to be stabbed as a rare player on the field. That might be a jersey warning as the QB D1 steps up in the pocket. Vortex getting a couple of yards. There on a the carry as he picks up five. Getting to the nine yard line. Will a jersey warning be called as the random player just got TP'd on the field? Will that be a too many men call? No, it suddenly won't. It will be a jersey warning. So maybe they just did not have 10 on the field once they teleported him. So. That's going to be a second and five for Baylor as they will receive the jersey warning. That's their second. So if they receive one more, they'll be flagged for, from now on. As the center for some reason tucking it, the ball's going to be snapped, which is dead right off of the snap. I mean, Baylor cannot get their stuff organized. So they will be moved all the way back to their five-yard line again. Second and ten. Well, third and ten off of the two flags. Illegal formation. Baylor players just running on the field. I mean, they have to just get stuff organized. This is now an end warning on Baylor.
As right now, as it looks, they have too many men on the field waiting for the blow here. Whalers trying to get their stuff set up. I honestly don't know how. It's still not a flag. Forty-nine seconds left in the quarter. As there's another flag on a play, it's gonna be dead. Baylor's gonna move all the way back to their one-yard line. Oh man, can this game pick kick off? The receiver was inside hashes. Great job. So that will give them another loss of down. So they're going to be all the way at the 50-yard line. So it's going to be snapped there. Vortex is going to drop back. He might punt it here as he's receiving pressure in his own end zone. It's going to be taken down inside his end zone, which USC is going to get a safety. So they get two points on the board as they will now receive the ball. Apparently they're calling a challenge on the play. Is Baylor. So if they fail to succeed this one, they will lose a timeout. So not the start we were looking for. I mean, I was excited for this game, but I'm not gonna lie, I lost my um <laughs> I am not excited whatsoever right now. I'm not gonna lie. This is this is boring as ever. I hate to admit it, but it's just true. So Which the rest are going to call it a DBLOS, so. That'll give Baylor plus five to move him up all the way to the six yard line. Well, basically, you'd still be in the five. I'm out here yawning because of how boring this game is. Looks like their center's on mobile, so he's going to keep throwing the ball as you'll see that. Oh, very often in the game, unless you, Baylor, decides to get a new center. Is that Jay off Perks, my player from USC? I guess it is. Ball's going to be snapped. Dropping back, rolling right as the quarterback. He throws it towards the right side. as a receiver. Incomplete. His receiver is not coming over the catch as he had him short. So it's going to be a turnover on downs. USC will receive the ball. At the six yard line, just between the hashes. So, by the way, I didn't mention that USC lost their two points because it was a DBLS, so the safety did not count. First and goal here. I mean, either way, you'd have to still punt that if you're a Baylor. So the ball is going to be snapped. Keep it against the quarterback. It's a free play, apparently. So it's going to be too many around Baylor. They cannot seem to have good management. Just like Ole Miss, you know, because you know, I have some people on my team who just don't like decide to listen. Oh, man. So it's going to be second and goal at the two as they're going to run it up the middle. It's going to be in. Touchdown, USC. They strike first as they get on the board early as they draw first play. With three minutes and 32 seconds, so finally a team getting on the scoreboard. In which, no problems for USC. I mean, that was all easy for them. 
due to the easy field position they had to set them up in a scoring position in which they throw it towards the right side in which they're going to complete the two. Hollywood is going to get the catch 8-0 to zero to start this game. Baylor in shambles here. They cannot seem to get their players managed. I mean, seriously. If anything, they'll have to have less flags if they're going to try and win this game. I mean, right there, it looked like they would have had a gamble there. With Zeris, he was right up his short. It's just that he missed it. Which gave him the TOD. Turnover on downs. So let's see what Baylor can do to answer. Will they answer if that's the case? Which is going to be Adam Warrior USC. So it's going to be. Yeah, they're going to have to possibly redo that kick as there's suddenly two balls. So it's going to be taken out by D1 Vortex as he makes a move, as he trucks a man, gets a tackle, getting inside. A 20 yard line all the way to the 22. So Baylor's going to have a first and 10 to start their drive. The play clock is subs. They literally just wasted the timeout. So Baylor. Well, I guess they will not call a timeout. Well, that's not Baylor calling, trying to call a timeout. That's USC. In which the rest will not give it to them. So we wait for the hike here. As Baylor is still trying to get players on the field. That's just going to be constantly blown. In which is going to be. A DOG. So that will move him back even more. Baylor just getting another flag. Oh, my goodness. Well, well apparently it was – they blow it again? How is that not DOG? I have no idea. And this is from, coming from a commentator's perspective. Apparently we have – I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna fall asleep watching this. Oh my goodness, this is just so bad. So I'm sorry for not being professional here, but I mean, you just, you guys gotta, gotta be in my shoes right now. I mean, I've just, I've been sitting here for the past how long? Like, I don't even know, like 20 minutes, and it's only a first quarter. Still, so they blow it. So like, once again, better to start your drive up with a flag. Center is not on the LOS. That's going to be a flag again. As right, so the ball is going to be snapped, making moves in the pocket. Susan, he's going to be take it down all the way inside the five. The rest are going to call that a sack. Just wait for it as they throw it towards the middle. Apparently, it's squatted down. So, Baylor is going to move back even more. I don't know why it's second and 24. Center cannot seem to just go on the LOS. Just, it's right there. I'm losing my sanity. Can he just scoot up? 
So the ball is going to be snapped. It's going to be dead. C minus one on Baylor, definitely. As he just cannot somehow see the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be another loss of down. They're going to move back all the way. It's going to be a... That's doing a bad job. I mean, awful. Quarterback's just going to chuck it deep, in, which is all the way out of bounds. That could be called grounding. Will they be flagged again? So we're gonna wait for a snap here. You know, what you snap you call a CG. It was a punt, so USC is going to move to their 40 or the 34 yard line. So it's going to be a first and 10 for them. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just not it. I'm, this is not it. I, I was excited for this game for no reason. So the ball's going to be snapped, Tim, which is going to be another dead play, which is going to move him back even more. All right. First and 15 to start their job is USC, which is going to be DSC running back. As he cuts it outside, he starts to make move. He has some blockers as he trucks all the way inside the 35-yard line. How was that moved to the 30? Oh, my God. He is all the way up there. Okay. Referees doing an absolutely horrible job. I mean, this is hor This is bad. Ball's going to be snapped there. Rolling left is Geo as he scans the field. He now steps into the pocket, throwing it towards the right side. As a DB, which is going to be caught. Risky throw there. As he's going to be red. Hey, he makes a truck. Has a blocker. He lags on his way out of bounds. Getting inside the 40. USC getting another big gain. Sets him up for another first and 10 at the 39. I mean, risky throw there. It looks like the Baylor DB read that. Just not come up with a pick. As USC tries to jump Baylor off sides, as they literally have no one on the line of scrimmage. So Gia's going to roll right, right off the snap as he's going to step up in the pocket, having no issues in the backfield. As he throwing it, throws the right side. It's going to be picked off again. Throwing it right to the DB. Catching it is set correct as Baylor will receive the ball back. This is going to be a touchback, which now set him up at the 20 yard line, first and 10. For Baylor, I mean, risky throw there. It looks like Geo is trying to fit it in to his receivers. Just, again, another risky throw, which that did not go well. So the ball's going to be snapped. And it's a miracle. Baylor finally gets a snap off without a flag. 
Quarterback drops back, rolls left. As he's now going into his own end zone. As he's now scanning the field. Now receiving pressure. Throwing it deep towards the left side. It's going to be incomplete. Throwing it towards the sideline. Has the receiver. It's not coming with the catch. So that's going to give him a second and ten. Oh, man. Will Baylor get anything? Just not the way you want to start this game if you're Baylor. Issue after issue. Killing them in this ball game. So it's going to be whistled here. With seven seconds left in the quarter. Baylor, which will most likely be the last play of this quarter. Ball's going to be snapped. Zeus is going to drop back as he scans the field. It will be a jersey warning, so it might be flagged back as he throws it towards the sideline. But way over the head of the receiver, which is going to be out of bounds, third and ten. Will Baylor get anything going? I, we will never know. We will never. I, that's all I can say right now. We will never know. We will never know, folks. Uh, I, I, I just, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be positive. As uh, the ball is not going to be snapped, rolling left, still not having a jersey. One Baylor player as he scans the field. Zeus, back up to his own end zone. He's going to throw it towards the left side. Three v one, PBU'd. It's going to be a complete great defensive play as he cut the ball out of his hands. It's a DB. I have no idea who it was. So that's going to give Baylor a 4 and 10. And what? Their player being flung? So that is that strange as they're going to. Have a fourth and ten as it is. Wait, as we wait for the whistle, it's now second quarter, so that'll be the end of the first. So we now wait for the snap as it is whistle here. Center is finally set. As the ball's gonna be snapped, which is dead on Baylor once again. That will bring him back all the way to the 15-yard line. Which will give him a 4 for 15. And it was a jersey penalty on Baylor, which they did just off of the step. Which we were not able to react to that. So that will give him a 4 for 15 at the 15-yard line. To start this second quarter, will it even start? As the ball is going to be snapped, dropping back as Vortex. He scans the field, throwing it towards the right side. As a receiver towards the middle, Baylor gets something. He tries up the middle, and they will finally get a first down. First one of the game. Baylor back in business. Oh my goodness, man. Baylor finally getting something. Something to give him a positive yardage. First and ten. All right, let me get back to being professional. I'm sorry. Also, we snap. Vortex rolls right as he's now receiving pressure. Only gets the block. Chest off. As he steps into the pocket, he scans the field. Has a receiver towards the middle. Decides to keep it instead. And what he's going to be taking down, only picking up one yard on a carry. That will definitely be hitbox. Why were the refs calling it so late? I have no idea. So that's going to be second and nine for Baylor. As we have a USC dude off sides. Will the rest call that? Who knows? So they get the snap off. Another no flag as we will be forced to into the pocket. As he's going to keep it once again up the middle. He rolls right. Gets the outside. Cuts back. Gets all the way inside the 50-yard line into the USC territory. That will set him up at the 48. First and 10 for Baylor again. Finally, Baylor looks like their offense is now clicking as there again is no flag. This game is starting to pick up as the QB D1 Vortex drops back, scanning the field. He's looking deep, throwing it deep. Towards right side, under throws. It's going to be diving catch all the way inside the red zone into the 20-yard line. 
Baylor's gonna get another first and ten. Looks like it was underthrown. May have been a pick, but no. Divey catches Danny. As it's gonna give him Baylor another first and ten. Whistle is blown here. I am losing my voice. My voice is get as deep as ever now. As well gonna be hand off to Exotic as he's trying to chuck up the middle. He's gonna pick up a nice little carry of three. I'll give Baylor a second and seven. All right, let me not be yelling now. I'm just going to commentate like this. That's going to be a free play, throwing a line screen towards the left side as it was failed, which that's going to move Baylor up. So, they are going to... As the ball's going to be launching towards the right side, it's short piece. Getting up a carry. And now move him inside the 10 yard line, first and goal. Baylor moving down the field quickly. As USC is going to call a challenge on that play, I have no idea what it's for. But they say they have two O line. Smart challenge there. So, as it seems here, USC challenge might work. So we're going to be We're just going to keep it right off the snap. He gets up the middle. We'll, we'll wait to see the spot. And what's it? Get into the end zone. Baylor getting on the board as it looks like the way they came into this game. They would get hammered, but no. They score. And they have a chance to tie this game with a two pointer. Insane. Let me chill before I lose my voice. I mean, crazy turn of events. I mean, seriously. And apparently, Baylor will not get the score. As you see here, the refs call it. Back. So I guess they will receive the ball all the way. To the eight yard line once again. And which will be a second and goal for Baylor. Ball's gonna be snapped, Vortex rolling right. Dropping back, he scans the field. As his O-line is not pick up the blocks as he's now receiving pressure. He has to throw it soon. Geo picking up on him as he still scans the field. Dropping all the way back to the USC. 45 as he's going to be thrown out of the out of bounds. So, I mean, you can't call that a grounding. Due to Baron being at least some receivers in the area, that will give Baylor a third and goal. Can Baylor get a point on the board for once in this game? As their touchdown was called back. So USC gets a break there. As Baylor waits for the blow.
They're still not blowing the ball. In which they finally do. Dropping back his vortex as he rolls left. Excuse me, doesn't roll left. Dropping back just completely. Ola not picking up a single block. He might have to chuck it. Let's decide to. All the way into his own. Denzo swatted down. Great defensive play by the D-line. Geo there to give him a fourth and goal. As the rest call it clean. So with one minute and 46 seconds left here in this quarter, Baylor is going to have a fourth and goal. It's not called fourth down. It's not called fourth down. The ball's going to be thrown towards the middle. Picked off either way. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to have to go on break. I need to talk to these referees. I mean, seriously, man. So, you'll see you receive the ball back. Uh, stay. Stay here, please. We are back, guys. I mean, I did not get any response from the referees. So, let's look there. The USC moved down the field. I mean, not good officiating for this game right now. Low key. So, we wait for the snap, you guys. It is already snapped. Excuse me for not getting the ball kick quickly as Gio rolls left, having no amounts of pressure at all. His O-line, just two in the backfield, only have one D-line. He could keep it here. No one in front of him in the pocket as he will have a free lane, gets himself all the way inside the 15-yard line. That will give him a first and 10 at the 12. Well, at the thir 13, apparently. Just between the hashes. So they'll throw it away and clean it. <laughs> Apparently it's the first and 11. I mean, Geo throws it and it's incomplete. And wait. It was off of his O-line. I mean, okay, so the refs do call it complete. I'm sorry, y'all. I just can't come to the game without good officiating. I mean, just... This so ball's going to be snapped. This is going to be a DS to Hollywood. I think that's a move. Getting... Uh, Trucking up the middle, which he's going to pick up a third and four. Picking up seven on a carry. Or should I say six? Now, which USC calls the timeout, so which will be the last of this half. And which they call time in. So they're going to re blow it here. 21 seconds left of the quarter. Can USC score before the half? Last screen to fire. It's going to be into the end zone. Trucking a man. USC. 
getting on the board once again as they get a 14-point lead before the half. Can they extend it with an extra point? Let's see. Also, we snap Geo dropping back. He goes in the pocket, throw gets towards the right side. Under the receiver as he was wide open into the end zone. For the end zone. Which. USC do not get the extra points, so they're going to be up by 14. Baylor will have 70 seconds to see if they can get on the board. USC looking sharp in this game. Well, not completely. As they kick it towards the Baylor returner, as he's going to pick up a nice little gain. They get good field position to start this drive. I mean, in my opinion, I'm not kicking that right to him. So they have a chance to get into field goal range. And so what's is going to be blown? Field goal range is past the 50-yard line. So if a team could get past the 50, they could kick a field goal from that long of range. Well, it depends if the refs will agree with it. So we wait for the snap here. Baylor clunk a timeout. So, well, yeah, apparently it's not a timeout, so it was subs. Okay, well, Monty misclicked. So there will be no flag on the play. So the ball is going to be snapped, dropping back to Zeus as he scans the field. Now it's time to go to the pocket. This, must be, this might be the last play of the drive. As he tucks it, that has to be a DBLOS, in which it will. So that will move Baylor. Up all the way. To the 49-yard line. So that will give him a first and five with one second on the clock. Are they going to try a field goal? Uh, I guess they won't. Which is an official timeout. So I guess they do allow the sack. So he tucked the ball, which when the quarterback tucks the ball in the pocket, DBs or d like can still die for it. So with one second left in the quarter, <coughs> Baylor to have to chuck it. Or maybe they have something else in mind. So the whistle's going to be blown here. Second and 20 for the Bears. So dropping back, final play of the half as Zeus rolls left, receiving a little amount of protection as he throws it towards the left side, incomplete. So we'll go into the half here with USC up by 14, Baylor having issues. We will reach back on VRSN. As for now, they're looking to skip, but stay here as we will go on break for just a second stay on my fellas
And we are back here in Waco, Texas, as we have, once again, USC taking on the Baylor Bears. So, it's going to be the start of the second half here, as USC is going to start this half with the ball up by 14. So, they're going to try and add another point to the board to see if they can send their lead. So, it's going to be kicked off here to start this second half, as the ball can be taken out of the end zone for a touchback. Excuse me for that. I didn't switch the scene, so you guys were hearing music while I was calling all that. I did not know it would be called that quickly. And uh, apparently, USC is still going. They rest did not call it down. Trucking man is Hollywood as he gets all the way inside the 30-yard line. Excuse me for the horrible commentating there as they will start this half. Threatening. And off of the kickoff, well, the delay of game, that will move them up by another five. So, it'll give them a first and five to start this drive. USC, smart there as QBGO drops back, rolls right. Has an O-line AFK, but doesn't matter. As the receiver's on the left side, incomplete as he just looked for his receiver there. Looks like... Hollywood had a little touch on him, just did not come with the catch. I mean, that's a perfect throw. Just you have to come up with that. So Baylor getting a break there as USC did not score after the burn. Oh, this is going to be blown here. The ball's going to be snapped. Gio is going to roll left right off the snap. He steps in the pocket. Throw goes towards the left side. Let's again. It's Hollywood again. That's inside the end zone. Let's see where they call it. They spot it short. USC is going to challenge it. If you guys did not know if the ball is, if the ball crosses the plane, that's a touchdown. In which Baylor... Losing some players. So they give the USC a touchdown. And if this game is over, we will head to West Point to watch the Army in Tennessee game. That's still even on. I have no idea. I never checked in. So for now, we will wait. As they announce our F F timer, which means a forfeit law, a forfeit timer. So if this timer ends with Baylor having less than seven players on the field, then that will give USC the win, which would be a FFW. If you guys did not know. So, well, I guess we might go to commercial break here. We're not commercial break. I don't even know why I call it every time. Well, we'll have a short little break here. Uh, I'm not going to use the countdown thing. I'm just going to use the old Fiesta Bowl thing. So, please excuse me for that. Uh, yeah. Stay on, VRSN.
All right, so I did not know I was muted this whole time, but yeah. USC will get the win. Baylor falls to 0-1-1 as USC moves up to 1-0 to start their season. So they'll definitely be moving up in the rankings. So we will try and see if the Tennessee and Army game is still on as stick with us soon. We'll be right back. I'll try and check that off. That's still on. For now, we'll go on another commercial break. Well, not commercial. I'm saying that again. Yeah, stick with us shortly. We are back here on VRSN. Excuse me for 
not have it a uh, uh, free game on. Uh, let me get rid of the opening statement so y'all don't hear the music. But uh, right now we have Tennessee taking on Army, the Army Black Knights, in which as we come here, it's still the first half as it's 20 to 16 as Army leads. Tennessee trying to see they can get on the board as there is going to be a flag on the field. Just going to wait to see the call. Maybe the flag didn't count. All right, so it's going to be reblown. So they're going to try to get set here. As X4 is going to drop back as he rolls left. Who is X4? Scanning the field, throwing it towards the left side. A fake AFK throwing the riser as he makes a move. It's not going to be taken down. Still on his feet, in which that will be a hitbox all the way back to maybe possibly the 29 yard line. No, they call it a first down. So Tennessee will get a first and ten off of the fake AFK. Apparently, it they you're fixing the scoreboard here as they try to get Tennessee possession of the ball. It wasn't even high. That's it. Offsides. And which it will not be called. So they try and jump him off sides, in which it's going to be called NDI for him running into the center. They still don't call it. They still don't call it, and the snap is called. Dropping back is the quarterback, who was X4. He skins the field. How is that not an offside? Who knows? Bad call by the ref. Some go to the pocket. Might be a free play. I don't know. Throwing it towards the right side. Short of the receiver as he has wide open on the comeback. So that's going to give Tennessee a second and ten. So Tennessee will not get the flag. So Army gets a huge break there as the ball is going to be snapped. Dropping back is the quarterback. going to touch the left side. X4 as he throws it to the right receiver. is going to be caught by 24K Wells as he gets inside Army territory. So give him a first and 10. Excuse me. Well, there's not really, like, any crowd noise. So there's really no point. We just. All right, there we go. So the ball is going to be snapped here. Dropping back is X4. Flag not called. He scans the field as he has no O-line in the backfield as he's receiving pressure. Has two D-line on him trying to track him down as he rolls towards his right side. He scans the field. Crowd is back. Oh, that's going to be swatted down. Great play by the D-line for Army there. That's just 45 seconds left in the quarter. That will give Tennessee a second and 10. As it was supposed to be first and 10 on that play. And apparently it's a replay down. Okay. So we wait for the snap here as the whistle is blown. <sighs> the center just, just decide, decides not to look at the line of scrimmage. As the ball's going to be started, throwing it towards the right side. It's going to be caught. Line screen towards Ricky as he hurdles a man, tries to get towards the first down. 
in which Army Feel like a call for I have a black here, you are so it's gonna be a second and ten. Apparently, which it should be first, so the ball is gonna be snapped. As X4 throws it towards the right side, has the receiver's gonna be caught by Jose, and that is him making a move as he gets all the way inside the 30 25 yard line. I'll give him another first and ten. Excuse me for the scoreboard. I mean, referees control the scoreboard in this league, so. Well, not in this, just this league, just NCAA leagues, just in general, which he did not set it to first and ten. The ball's going to be DS. It's the ball, it's going to be down. It's a live ball. It's going to be scooped up by the Army defender, DRK. God, as it looks like excellent as I am seeing players get flung all over the field because we have people in the game that want to use excellent and be weird. way to see what the referee is going to call it. Excuse me for the horrible commentating today, y'all. It's just, I can't deal with horrible refing. I mean, this officiating is not going so well. This game, I guess it's going to be new played here. So give me a second outside so try and get this stuff set up real quick. So we're still that way here. This will definitely be going down as my longest stream ever. <laughs> By the end of this game. So, still having troubles with officiating is the, are the referees. As we still wait. Yeah, I'll definitely be right back, y'all. Uh I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a drink real quick. This is this is unbelievable. Oh shoot, you see have official access. Yeah, go check that out, y'all. Uh, someone commented, com commenting in a video, so it all got, you guys can check that out. But I'll be AFK. Uh, just watch the game. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll be right back.
All right, back. As the ball is going to be swatted down, Tennessee in scoring position here, seeing if they can possibly score before the half. Monty kind of 4K. So that's going to pick up, give him a third and goal. At the seven yard line, ball is going to be snapped. Looks like they're going to try. Deed it up in the middle. It's going to be on and in. Amir is going to give the Vols a touchdown with 50 seconds left in the quarter. They get on the board as they now take the lead. So Tennessee now up by two as this game here looking way better than the game we saw earlier. I mean, these two teams just going at it. So looks like Tennessee is going to go for two here as they only have one O-line on the field, which might be flagged, which it won't be. X4 rolls right, throwing it towards the right side. It's going to be caught by Rizzo as he's going to get a two-point. As it's now a four-point game. So, Tennessee just gets away there as they only have one center on the field as the ball is going to be sky kicked towards the middle. And it's going to be scooped up by Jay. It's bad. Ball is going to be thrown. It's a live ball. That's clearly X Lone. As it looks like Rizzo is going to scoop it up and he tries to make a move. That's going to be taken down as Trooper calls it a dead play. I uh, forgot to mention that the official for this game is Trooper, the league owner and chairman of UCFL. So if anything, support his league by joining it and just low-key playing in it. So with 12 seconds left, Army's going to have the ball at the 30-yard line. So let's see what they can do here. Will they get a point on the board before the half? Or will Tennessee hold? Man, for some reason they're calling a challenge. So what's this going to be blown here? Ball's gonna be snapped there. Dropping back is Kobe for you know, Kobe as he scans the field. 
Throwing it deep towards the left side. Has a receiver burning. 2v1. It's going to be caught all the way inside the 20-yard line. But doesn't get down before the half. As he dove. As he, he tries to make a diving catch for it, which did not go well as Army do get a huge game, but do not score before the half. So, yeah, that will be the end of this half. I mean, shoot, we have a ball game here <laughs> in West Point. I mean, wow, these two teams going right at it. 20-24 to 24 here. As Tennessee is going to go to the half with the lead. And as it seems, it looks like they're not going to skip the halftime. So we will not go anywhere. We're going to be staying right here. As this was going to be blown. So they ain't going to wait for the kick. That's going to be shot all the way. Oh, no, it's going to be received by Shear, which is Jose. As he's going to be taking it out. He has some blockers as he rolls right now. Trying to get to the outside. Seems like they're going to run a lateral. They do. Towards the leg side. It's going to be scooped by Amir. He's going to be getting all the way inside. Still not taking that. That's definitely going to be a hitbox. So. Tennessee is going to start this half with some trickery. At the 49-yard line. So with the lead, they're... They get they receive the ball in the second half and start this half of good field position. Not saying a mirror, but that was X4. So excuse me for that. So we're gonna wait for the snap here. As the ball's going to be going towards, towards the right side. It's going to be caught by Twin. There's a flag on the play. Might be false start. As it will be at C-1. So that will bring him back by 5, which will give him a first and 15. All the way at the 44-yard line. So Tennessee, not a way you want to start this drive. So whistle is going to be blown. Trying to get set as a center. So the ball is going to be snapped. Dropping back. Rolling left is X4 as he scans the field. Has three receivers towards the middle. Is somehow the ball is just not getting out of his hands. Just wasn't throwing the ball. Their center's got to move up here if they do not want to flag. As he right now he's off the line of scrimmage. As they finally tell him to move up, and what he does, as it's going to be snapped, throw it towards the middle, right off the snap, incomplete. Having his receiver towards the middle, which. He just not jump for the catch. That's going to give Tennessee a third and, tw 30, third and 31. I mean, a complete busted coverage towards the middle. I mean, no one picked them up. So Army gets a break there. As Tennessee having a huge missed opportunity there. Might have had his way towards, might have gone to the end zone with that one. As the ball is going to be stabbed, dropping back is X4 as he scans the field. As the receiver birdie towards the left side, well, waiting to see if he will throw it. Doesn't decide to throw it towards short right side. It's going to be a complete. I mean, he had a receiver absolutely toasting a total buzz towards the left side. Just not seeing him is the quarterback.
So, as it looks here, Tennessee might punt the ball here as Army drops back their returners as the ball is going to be snapped. There's going to be a flag on the play, which will most likely be called dead. C minus one. Which is going to be a turnover on downs. So Tennessee will still have the ball. Graphic center issues. Looks like one of them are on Xbox has the ball. This is going to be snapped. Dropping back is X4 as he scans the field. Looks like they're not going to punt it anytime soon. That's, that's CB rush. So the ball is going to be snapped. Rolling left off of the snap is Kobe as he throws it to the right side. It's going to be caught. It's going to be left side. Army gets in the end zone over the turnover of Downs. They cash it in. Waiting to see the rolling on the field. I mean, you could just call it OTO. Officials timeout. Doesn't decide to. Is the referee. Excuse me for the thumbnail, y'all. It's just... Okay, well, they do call a touchdown. But yeah, excuse me for the thumbnail and stuff. Uh, I can't fix that. I started to stream to watch the Baylor one, and this game was on right before the Baylor one. And somehow it's taking longer than it. So, Army looks like they're going to go for two here as they take the lead. These teams going back and forth here in this game as the whistle is going to be blown. As Kobe's going to drop back. Rolling right, throwing it towards the right side. It's going to be PBU'd. It was caught by one of the receivers on Army in which the DB makes a great play on the ball to get force it out of his hands. So, they're going to have to kick it off up by two points. So, we're going to wait here for the kickoff as it's still not blown. Mm 
Much it finally is. So this will be kicked off here. Not going to be returned. So it's going to be going out of the end zone for a touchback. So Tennessee will be the ball at the 20 yard line. Well, excuse me, the 25. Which will set him up for a first and 10. So, Tennessee just giving uh, Army good field position there on that drive. Which set him up, set Army up to score as they just walked in. Let's see what they can do to respond here as the ball is going to be snapped. Flag on the play. Free play as X4 is going to decide to throw it short instead. It's going to be a complete. So it's going to be an offsides on the Army, which will give him a first and five at the 30 yard line. I mean, as it looked there, it looks like it seems like three years were burning. Just the QB not seeing that, just playing it safe there when it was a free play. So if I were him, I'm risking that. As the ball is going to be snapped here. Not moving on the snap is the quarterback. He's going to be taken down all the way into the back to the 25. That will give him a second and 10. So it's like that flag didn't, wasn't even necessary. So we wait for a snap here. The ball is going to be snapped by X4. Flag right off the snap. It's going to be another free play for Tennessee as X4 throws it towards the middle. It's going to be picked off, but it will still be called back for a free play. So, I guess Tennessee will move the ball back up to the 30-yard line, but this time it will be a second and five. Two minutes and 55 seconds here left of the quarter. Both teams having issues when it comes to flags. And O-line. For Tennessee, also have a good shoot. The ball's going to be that. They're going towards the middle. It's going to be caught. Might be an illegal receiver as they had a tight end inside the hashes. Which the center is over the line of scrimmage. So that will definitely be flag, guys. It's going to be a keeping draw here as he's going to try to keep it up the middle. So it's not going to be called a C minus one there, as you guys clearly see. <laughs> the center was right over the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be whistled here. As the center decides, finally get the ball in the line of scrimmage, as the ball is going to be snapped. Rolling left is X4, as he now drops back. Now she's got to throw it towards the middle. It's going to be caught. Caught by Amir. I see they get a nice couple of yards. Getting inside Army territory to the 38 yard line. Excuse me, not 38. About the. What is that?
43 yard line and apparently this here was shut down. Oh wow. So I guess someone shut down the server. Which no one could find out who it was. So as they try to set things back up here. We'll be right back. So stay on. This just in. Uh, I will be streaming another game, so I guess that will be it from VRSN in this UCFL game. Tennessee and Arby. Uh, I'll give you reports on the next game, which will most likely be tomorrow. We just don't know who the matches are. So thank you for sticking with us through the stream, as I will be starting another one shortly. So again, okay, this is VRSN coming to an end. We'll see you in uh we'll see you soon.